Hey everyone, and welcome to CS121 lecture number eight. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about loops. So with what we know so far, how would we tell our program to repeat something over and over? So say, as an example, we wanted to print out hello world to the terminal more than once. So I could write down the C out statement and print out hello world. Uh, and then I could copy and paste it as many times as I want. So I could print it multiple times. So I could copy and paste it. So I could print it twice. I could copy and paste it again to print out three times. So this works, but this could get frustrating if I wanted to repeat this code a large number of times. Another thing that we might want to do is print out every element in a vector. So we could use the at member function to access elements by the index and then print those out individually. So here I have the uh, a vector of ints called digits and it has this list of numbers here and what i could do is do digits dot at using dot notation to call the member function at and then pass in the index so that i could get the first element which is at index zero which would print out three and then i could get the second element which is at index one and then that would print out one and i could keep on doing that for all of the elements within digits and just keep on using dot at to access all of the elements within the digits vector. In this case, this would work because we know exactly how many elements are in this vector. So we know that there are six elements, so we can access all of those elements with indices zero through five. But doing it this way would actually be impossible if we didn't know how many elements were in the vector ahead of time. So there has to be a better way to do this. And there is. This is what loops are used for. And this is the syntax for what the standard for loop looks like in C++. So we have uh, a loop which enables us essentially to run a block of code repeatedly. And in C++, we have the keyword for followed by the parentheses. And it has these three different things uh, that I've color coded here first being the initialization, next being the condition, and last being the update. So this could look like, uh, as an example of this, uh, in blue we have the initialization where we initialize the variable that we're going to use over the course of the loop, and this is executed only once. So here we're initializing a variable called i, which we're going to use to uh, kind of help us determine how many times that we're going to repeat the blocks of code that are within the curly braces. So within the curly braces following this for loop, we have what's called the loop body. And in this loop body, we can have any number of statements. And those are what we will repeat for as long as the condition is true. So essentially, we start by initializing i to some value. And then in the next part of the for loop, we have in orange the condition. The condition is what we use to control how many times we want our program to repeat doing something. And essentially, how do we know that the condition won't be true at some point? That's where the third part of the for loop comes in. It's the update. So in green here, we have uh, something that updates the variable that we initialized uh, at the beginning of the for loop. And after every time this loop body is run, the update uh, statement is executed, which will modify the variable that was initialized. So in this case, we are incrementing i by 1. This i++ plus plus syntax just means that we're adding 1 to i after every time that this loop repeats. All right, so at some point we know, after some number of updates, the condition will be false. And we're going to stop repeating our code, and we're going to exit the loop. So in this case, we know that because i starts at 0, but we're adding 1 to i every single time we repeat this, this loop body. And the condition is while i is less than 5. So eventually, i will be equal to 5, because we keep adding 1 to it. And once i equals 5, I won't be less than 5 anymore. And then that's when the condition will be false. We'll stop repeating, and we're going to exit this loop. And we're going to continue on with our program with any statements that might come after the closing curly brace. So essentially what comes after the for loop. 
So let's look at an example. So we had earlier, um, we wanted to print out hello world a few times. So we could write instead, uh, equivalent to this copy pasted lines of code, we could make a for loop. And we could initialize i, uh, our variable i to zero. And then we're going to say, the condition is that i has to be less than three. And every time we run this line of code, this uh, hello world being printed out, we're going to increment i by one every time. So at some point, once i is uh, equal to three, it's going to stop printing out hello world. So essentially, we start i at zero, we keep on adding one to it, and then we print out hello world for every single time. Uh, at some point, i will be equal to three, and then we'll stop looping because um, that's that condition will evaluate to false. So we can also look at it for our uh, looping through every element within the vector example. So instead of using the at member function to access every element within the digits vector um, by its index, we can actually make a for loop and use the i initialization variable as kind of like the way that we access each element within the vector via its index. And this is kind of where the power of loops really shines, because we can have the condition here be based on the size of the vector. Here we're calling digits.size. So we don't actually need to know ahead of time how many elements are in the vector to ensure that we can print out everything within that vector. So we're calling digits.size as part of our condition. So we'll keep on looping for as long as i is less than digits.size. And remember, digits.size is going to return the number of elements that we have within our vector. So in this case, we have six elements. So we'll keep on printing out digits at uh, index i, the digit that is at index i, for as long as i is less than six, right? And we're going to keep on incrementing by one. We'll start i at zero because um, vectors are zero index. So the first element is going to be at index zero. So we're going to start i at zero, and then we're going to keep on printing the digit at index i. And we'll increment i by one every time that we repeat this line of code so that we can get to the next element in the vector. <clears throat> Eventually, we're going to stop when i is equal to the vector's size, because that's we, we know that because vectors are zero indexed, meaning that the first element is zero, we know that the last element will be at the index equal to the number of elements minus one, right? So the condition i is less than digits that size kind of enforces that. So we know that we'll be able to finish uh, or exit out of this loop once we have printed the very last element in this vector. But this might be easier to see in action, so let's just visualize this. So we have our digits vector here represented. Uh, so we have the digits 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, um, and it's each of their corresponding indices above. So when we start running this for loop, we are going to initialize i, our variable i, um, to 0. So the index that we're going to be pointing at is the very first element in this vector. Uh, we're going to check the condition is 0 less than the size of this vector. In this case, the size is 5. So it is less than the size. So we're going to go into the print statement inside the for loop body. So we're going to print out the um, the digit that is at index i, which in this right now is 0. So we get to print out 3. And now we're going to run the update in green. We're going to add 1 to i, and then i is going to shift over to the next element in the vector. Um, and now we're going to print out the digit at index 1, which is 1. Then again, we're going to check the condition. 1 is still less than the number of elements. So we're going to add 1 again to i, and it's going to shift over. So now we're going to look at the element at index 2, and we're going to print that out. So we'll print out 4. Then again, we check the condition. Check 2 is still less than 5 the number of elements, the size of this vector. So we're going to add one, 1 to i yet again. And then we keep on doing this. We print out the uh, element at index 3. And then we do this again, and we print out the element at index 4. And at this very final um, loop, we're going to add 1 to i yet again. And it's going to be now equal to 5. So the size of this vector is 5. 
So when we check this condition and we see that i is less i is not less than five because i is now equal to five, uh, we're going to just exit out of this for loop. So we we check this condition and because this condition is false, we will stop repeating whatever's in the body of the for loop. So digits dot size is five. Now i is equal to five and we terminate our loop. We're not going to be incrementing i anymore, and we're going to continue on with the rest of our program uh, with whatever follows after this closing curly brace.